Hello everyone, this is Pastor Buck Stanley this afternoon. I pray on this hump day, Wednesday, that you are feeling the presence of your God. And that being hump day, we'll realize that when Jesus come into our heart, that that was hump day. Because now, we're on our way home to heaven. Pastor Nikki and I are so happy that you've joined us today and we just pray that that all is well and all will be well if you're trusting in the Lord. Amen. I'm going to lead us to the Lord in prayer today. God knows what you and I need. Sometimes my need may be a lot different from your need. But we all have needs. Yes. And there is a God that can supply that need. There is a God that will not withhold any good thing from us. Amen. And so whatever you need right now, I, I want you to put that foremost in your mind as we go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to give us our miracle today. Today is your miracle day on this Wednesday, hump day. Today is your miracle day. If you will have faith, if you will believe, and if you will believe in the right one, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're sick and afflicted, by His stripes you are healed. If you're hungry, He said, come and drink, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. If you're thirsty for something that's not satisfying you today, then come to the well of Jesus Christ, a well that will never run dry. Father in heaven, almighty God, creator of all things that we know and even don't know, God, we come to you today from glad tidings of Jacksonville, beautiful sanctuary, asking you, Lord, to forgive us for taking you and so many things for granted in this life. Lord, thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for the blood running warm in our veins. Thank you for a roof over our head. Shoes on our feet, clothes on our back. Oh yes, food on the table. God, we thank you for friends. We thank you for who you are. And that you have a divine appointment for each and every one of us. God, that we have a, a beautiful destiny. Help us to fulfill that destiny. Fill us to overflowing with your faith and your wisdom and your love and your understanding. God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And Lord, lead us in the path that you want us to walk in. And forgive us of our sins. I pray for those that are suffering in this pandemic. God, you are the God of all comfort. You've comforted me. And I know that you show no respect to persons. Right now, have your way and anoint this, this 30 minutes, Lord. In Jesus' name, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost flow. And we thank you. Now let's give the Lord a good hand clap of prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor Becky. How are you today? I'm fine. Amen. Are you ready to sing Looking for a City? I sure am. Well, why don't you get that going for us? And we're going to sing this old song, copyrighted in 1941 by David Moore. And I want to say this. I'm looking for that city myself. Oh, a wonderful city. Come on, everybody. Let's worship the Lord. Here among the shadows. In a lonely land, we're a band of pilgrims on the move. Turning down the sorrows and the struggles every hand, we are looking for a 
said he built a car. Come on now. Yes, we're looking for a city. eternity. Amen. Amen. All of my hopes have been renewed because before I got saved, I had no hope. I didn't either. And he's still working on me. Praise God. Amen. Pastor Nicky, you got some good news from that word today. You know, the longer that you follow Jesus, the better you get to know him, the stronger your faith becomes, and you trust him in whatever comes. Listen to uh, some of the scripture from chapter 11, the book of Hebrews. That's our faith chapter. And the writer says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And verse 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, 
moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Amen. We have a lot of things, folks, to look forward to. Oh, we have so many good things waiting for the children of God. And I know that sometimes that we get weary. We get weary in well-doing. We get weary of the pressures that the world puts on us, yes. all around us. But I want to say to you today that the writer of Hebrew, the Apostle Paul, was saying that we've got to have faith and we've got to continue to believe. I know that most of us that love the Lord want to please Him. But you can't please God unless you have faith. Amen. Hebrews says in chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Listen, if you believe that God created you, you've got to believe that God can fix your problems. Yes. If you believe that God took the dust of the earth and breathed the living soul into Adam, and that through Adam and Eve the generations came on down. You've got to believe if something goes wrong in this body, that the very God that created us from the dust of the earth and breathed the living soul, the God that formed us in our mother's womb and knit our bones together with our flesh. Oh, it's amazing when I see uh, those pictures of an child and how that baby is inside all hungry, just, just having a big time in there. He's got complete peace. And I know that when my children, every one of them, when they were in their mother's womb and their tummy, her tummy started getting big, that I would lay my hand on her tummy and feel my babies moving around. And I want to tell you, the God that formed my children in their mother's womb, the God that formed you in your mother's womb, this same God, there is nothing impossible with Him. Whatever you're facing today, there is a God that is big enough to take care of that big problem. If it's something that's small, but it's just irritating you, and it seems like it's just like a gnat, you know, I can't stand a gnat. I've wondered sometimes, God, why did you make a gnat or a fly? They are the most aggravating things they are. Oh, they are the most aggravating things they are. But I want to tell you that God has a way of helping you with those little things that are bothering you. Yes, he does. You know, sometimes we think, well, my problem's not too small. One time a person told me, and this come right out of her mouth, she said, I don't want to bother God with my little problems when there's so many people that's got more trouble than I got. And I said, honey, you are so wrong in your thinking. God wants to be with you, and he's big enough to be with you in the little and the big situations. Yeah. And he's not too busy, and he wants you to come un unto him. He said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Come unto me, all of you that are weary in your souls. He said, and I will help you. Amen. That's what faith does. 
Faith gives us the ability to believe that help is on the way. Amen. Help is on the way for you and me. I know that the last several months I've been awake day and night with this knee replacement and I've thought about the pain and, and all the suffering. But you know, my God has been with me and it was a perfect time for me to get this done. Now that I'm getting on my feet in the morning, we're making our way to North Carolina and then West Virginia. I don't know what's going to happen in Nikki's in my life this summer. I know that God is sending us up to Indian Meadows right up there in Lerona, West Virginia. We have a little home on the side of the mountain. And in 2006, we built a, well, God built, but he used us to build a little church up there. And the church is so small that we're not going to be able to have but just a few people unless we have an outdoor service. And I was thinking how that God is going to make a way. God's going to make a, make a way for us if we're going to commit ourselves to following Jesus up to those beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. God's not going to send us up there and there'll be a great big brick wall that we can't get through. Yeah. But God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. And He will remove the giants in our life. He will remove the problems in our life. But first of all, we've got to have faith to believe that He can do it. Yeah. We've got to have faith in our God. And whatever He's done for someone else and help them, He'll do for you and me, beloved brothers and sisters. God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. He will not bless someone and then say, well, I don't like you and you're not really doing what you should. God, as long as we come to Him with a pure heart, as long as we come and confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we have a covenant that says God is a present help in time of trouble. Amen. No, I don't worry about those things anymore. I used to worry a lot when I first become a Christian. But I've seen God time after time after time. God has helped me and showed me things and showed me the way and showed me when there seemed to be no way that God showed me the way. He will shine a light in your way and give you a path to walk in. Yeah. No matter what your situation is, it is not hopeless and don't feel helpless when there's a God that's got His arms outstretched and saying, come unto me and I will give you rest. I'll give you something that the world can't give you. I'll give you something that sexual immorality can't give you. I will give you something that alcohol can't give you. I will give you something that drugs can't give you. I will give you something that money can't give you. I will give you something that nobody else can give you. Come unto me and, and try me and I will show you who I am. You've got to believe that He is. You've got to believe that He's listening. You've got to believe that, you know, Noah believed God. Yes. God said, build an ark. He said, I am going to destroy this whole earth <coughs> with a flood. And you know, <laughs> Noah couldn't sign a contract and go to the zoning board and get him a, a bunch of carpenters to help him. Nobody believed in what God had told him to do. But Noah, he had faith. And what he did, he worked for a hundred years. Him and his family worked a hundred years. Now, he may have had somebody to help him if he paid him some money. I don't know exactly how it got done. But it took a hundred years to get it done. And still, throughout that hundred years, not one more soul was added to that Boat, you know why? Because they didn't believe. They had no faith that God was bringing His judgment upon the world. Beloved, I want to say this to you today, that God is bringing judgment upon this world. Yeah. And we must believe 
that he will take care of his people that have entered into his covenant with him. And you may say, how can I do that? You must confess your sins. You must repent. And you must turn from the way that you're going. And you must follow in the way that Jesus takes you. Oh, I'll tell you what. We worry about what we have to quit doing and what we have to do and what we what we uh, can or can't do. But let me tell you something. God is the game changer. God is the life changer. Jesus is the great shepherd. And you know, Noah believed God, built the ark, and him and his family were saved from destruction. And then we'll talk about Abraham. Abraham was called to leave everything he knew and to follow Jesus. Follow God to another land that he had never been. And you know what? He believed God. He had faith. And faith is the game changer that we need today in this pandemic and all the problems we're having in this world. And you see the news. You see the injustice. You see the evil that's going on. Oh my God. And then we wonder, is God going to bring judgment upon this world? Yes, He is. Yes, He is. And I believe the judgment has already started with this world. And it's time for us to get right with God and to believe. To believe in the one that has prepared a city for us. Whose builder and maker is God. Man's not driven one nail. Has not done one thing. God himself has built that city for you and I. And not only a new city, Jerusalem. But a new heaven and a new earth. I want to tell you something. That day is coming fast for this old man. And I believe it's coming fast for this world I believe judgment has already begun and you know what the Bible says that God's judgment begins at the house of God how's it going to be for the sinner oh I'm telling you today we have a loving God we have a God that has so much for us eyes have not seen ears have not heard Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. Won't you love Him? Won't you believe? Won't you believe that the Messiah has come 2,000 years ago and that the Messiah came to be the sacrifice but He's coming again to be the King of Kings! Woo! The King of Kings is coming. And He's going to take us home. Home. And we'll be home at last. Where we can all sit down at the marriage feast of the Lamb. And we can drink wine with our Lord. We can feast at His table. Oh my God. Oh, He's got it for you and me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm begging you right now. Why don't you try the Lord Jesus? Why don't you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. And I'm willing to turn and go the direction you take me in. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save my soul from a devil's hell. Cold Christian Come back. Come back. Come back now as I beg of you. Come back. Come back to your first love. Let the fire burn bright again in your heart. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Pastor Dickie, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. What do you say? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to close today. I want to remind you that we're going to be working our way up to the Blue Ridge Mountains.
If I can find a place that's got some good internet, we'll come and be with you again. But as it is today, this is our last good news out of glad tidings of Jacksonville. We'll be gone about four months, I guess, but we'll be working. We're not going to uh, lay back and have pleasure. My pleasure is doing the will of my Father. Amen. We're going to close with this old song by Dottie Rambo. God love her heart. She's in heaven now. It says, remind me, dear Lord. Don't you think God is reminding all of this world that things can go wrong and we need Him? Yeah. Amen. Bye for now.